Welcome back to The Hand Toolery. I'm Andrew Malacy, and today we're gonna to be doing some dovetailing. I've got the drawer here that'll be dovetailed. This is exactly how it's gonna be oriented. There's the front. I've got a thickness, and it's all squared up and ready to go. I'll do some half line dovetails on the front, of course, because that's typically what you do for a drawer. And then I'll do through dovetails on the back. I left my pieces long on the sides. These are my side pieces. This will go on the right. This will go on the left, if it's facing me. And I've got them all squared up and ready to go. They've got a groove in the bottom already that's a quarter inch groove, which is, runs a quarter inch deep. And it's 3 eighths inch up from the bottom. So I've made the bottom also my reference edges. So I'm really not going to touch them on anything. I've also got the back, which is slightly oversized this way, uh, width-wise. And again, that'll be through dovetails. Now, I want to make sure that I have everything as close as possible to matching the other drawers. So I've got a, a, a bevel gauge set to a 1 and 8 uh, ratio here. And what I'll do is to get, the, to get how far in the tails will actually go on this board, I would just steal the the measurement from the other ones as well, how much I'm gonna leave right here. So I'll take that to a marking gauge, mark it here, and then uh, mark it across. So that's really it. Uh, you wanna make sure that you've got all your tools sharp and that you've got everything organized. That way it'll lessen the chance that you'll add in any extra errors that you can make just through lack of organization and things like that. I've got a bunch of markers and squares and uh, and knives. I've got my, my marking knife. I keep my I keep my pencil sharpener close. As you can see, I sharpen a lot. I'll show you some of the things I do and uh, I hope it turns out well. The other two drawers turned out very, very good, so I'm happy with those. But anyways, let's get to it. Now that I've got that, now that I've got that established, I'm going to mark in from the back on each side. So this is my right side here. I'm going to take it and mark from the very middle into that. And so on my right side board, that'll be the marking. I, that'll be the mark I take down all the way around. So if we line them up like this, I just marked that board, you should be able to set this on the line and, yep, if I look down the side here, my marking gauge line sits right on it. So I'll do the same on the other side, I'm just going to reset this gauge. It should be close, but it's not perfect, I can feel it, so, so I'm just going to reset it there. All right, so I've got both the boards marked. That's my right side, that's my left side. And now that I've got that, I'm gonna make sure that I mark somewhere very clearly, but behind the marking gauge line, right side, and then the left side, and then like T for top. Just because I don't wanna get confused at all. So here's what I'm talking about. You can see my marking gauge line, and I marked right top there. So I don't need this for a while yet until I cut my I'm a tails first guy, so I'm gonna cut these first. I'm gonna cut the tails here. And uh, some considerations. You wanna hide the groove on this, and there's gonna be a groove on this too, which I've actually gotta cut. So let me do that right now. We don't want that groove to be showing. It's not it's not fatal if it does, you can fill it with end grain. It's, it's something that can be fixed and covered up a little bit. But it's better if we just lay out our tails, our tail boards, so they cover it up, right? So what you wanna make sure is that you have one of your tails on the side boards, cover that up. And so we know that's 3 eighths of an inch in, 
So what I want to what I'm going to do is make a tail that starts a quarter of an inch in at the very top. And so that means that the very top of the tail will be here and it'll end right about where that groove is on the bottom. So what I like to do is uh, just some uh, common measurements to make things really easy on myself. If I take my square here, I've got it set to a quarter inch. I'm going to set to a quarter inch on the top and get it close. And get this one. I'm going to set this to a quarter inch on the top. In fact, I can set all of them to a quarter inch right now, actually. What they say is, uh, so this is a half inch thick, this board. And I've heard that you should make the half pins that are on the ends of your tails half the thickness of your board. But, I mean, it just depends on how you want it to look. I actually made one drawer and then remade it because I didn't like the look. So, here's what it looks like on the end. I just made the marks. Now I'm going to transfer those lines across the top. The outside face of the drawer is always going to be my reference face. So, I'm going to just transfer that across the top. Here's what that looks like. Now we're gonna put uh, lay out our our full pin that goes in the middle here. And essentially, it's just halfway mark, right? Yep, that's right on. And then what I like to do from there is, even though I have a quarter inch half pin over on this side, I'm act, I'm gonna make this a really small pin in the middle. So I'm gonna mark only an eighth inch total, so it'll be a sixteenth on either side. I want this to be really really small. There it is. That's what it's going to end up looking like. I almost marked too far over on one of them. So I have a, whenever I transfer those lines down there, it'll actually be about a quarter inch at the bottom. So it's not a big deal as far as my chisel is concerned. Now I'm going to transfer, I'm going to do the same on the other board. It'll probably be a slightly different number. Yeah, it's, it's just a little bit different. So. All right, now that I've got all the, the lines transferred over, I'm just gonna set this here, and using my, uh, my bevel gauge here, just transfer all my lines down. And I like to over mark the lines, so I draw long lines. This is something I think I saw in the Woodwright shop, he said that Roy Underhill, Roy Underhill was saying that it helped guides your eye, which then helped guide your hand if you do it long like that. And I mean, I've been having good results lately, so maybe that's the case, or maybe I'm just getting better, I don't know. In reality, it's not critical too much this the exact angles and whatnot. It's really only important that you get everything very uh, square across. Uh, and then the pins, they have to be perfectly vertical and that's it. Those are the really most important things. Uh, so another thing I do is I like to mark the waist by drawing lines where the waist is. So that'll be waist, that'll be waist, that'll be waist. So anywhere I'm marking on the, the gauge line and such, it'll all be waste. Can you see that? See how I made lines there and there? Those will all be waste. And I'm gonna leave I'm basically gonna try and cut as close to the line without while leave I'm gonna try and cut as close to the line while leaving the line as I can. Same thing on this board, and then we'll get to cutting. As far as layout's concerned, we are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower this down in my vise quite a bit, leaving very little, because the higher it is, you get more chatter whenever you saw. And I'm gonna set my gauge on here. This is something that Rod, Rob Cosman says to do. I'm gonna use the, the, the level on the gauge to get this plumb. There we are. 
and I'm gonna just go ahead and start sawing. That looks good. I like to do all the same direction first. And then come back the other way. Since I have my dovetail saw out right now, I'm gonna go ahead and just do the other one. I wasn't happy exactly with the placement of my center line there, so I went and readjusted it. So I'm gonna do it while it's fresh in my memory. You can kind of see it right there, it's a little bungled. So here we go. I'm gonna take a chisel and relieve the side now. I flipped it on its side. I've got my cross cut saw right here. And I'm staying away from my line because I'm gonna chisel this away. You can see what I've left there. Slight, just the tiniest little bit and I'm gonna chisel that away. But first I'm gonna do the other side. Now I'll pare away the rest once I stand it up on end. With this one, you've gotta be a little careful because it's unsupported. So I'm just gonna play it by ear and see if it'll take any malleting. Most of the time it will, but this is actually maple, so it'll, it's a little sturdy. I'm not really forcing the chisel, I'm just giving it light blows to help it with inertia to push through and so I'm not trying to smack it through I'm just trying to just help it cut all right now the other one all right and now yeah just to pare down to the line And square, I'm square. Great, one down, I'm gonna do the other real quick here. All right, there we are. I got the half pins removed. And as you can see, see that groove there? It's covered up by the tail. So now we're gonna get the chopping out the waist, that tiny little bit of waist right there. And what I like to do is just take my quarter inch chisel and just bash it, quite frankly. Um, and maybe my eighth inch as well. Now, before you actually start pounding on this, you want to make you want to make sure that there's no debris under it. So, I blow everything off like that, and I just sort of feel there's nothing there, because whenever you flip this board, you don't want there to be impressions or dents left from the stuff that it might be under it as you're pounding on the piece. So what I do is I sort of treat it like a mortise in a way. So I got my mallet here, and I start away from the line. You can see my baseline is right. See my baseline is right here. I start away from the line and just make a, a mark with my larger chisel if it'll fit, connecting the curves basically. I'll show you real quick. 
And then what I'll do is I'll take my smaller chisel and sort of remove that and then just keep doing that. So I'll take the smaller chisel and pop it out. There's that. And I'll switch back. You know what? It's not going to work. So I'm just going to take the smaller chisel and go through. And I'm going to flip because these pins are so small that they come out really easily. There you go. That's that. Even in maple, this, this comes out quite easily. So our next job is just to make sure that's square all the way across there. With a little bit of waste that's left there, I'm going to have the waste with this chisel, then go back to the line. So I'm not on the line yet, I'm just in front of it. Now I can probably go do that again, I'm going to have it one more time. Now I've got a tiniest little bit left, let me show you. Now I'm going to go down to the line. I'm going to do a nice easy tap. The reason why I do that is because if there's, if you're not careful, what ha what will happen is the bevel will push the chisel back. So once I've gotten below the surface a little bit, then I'm going to start angling it back in. All right, just the smallest amount. And now the same on the other side, but I don't have to be as careful. You're going to get a good sense for how square your sawing was, depending on if you feel like you have the same amount of space between the curves when you're removing your waste. And then I have my vise here just slightly cracked open, and what I can do is just push out the waste that's been, that's been created. All right, that looks good, right? But it's not perfect, it's not good until we actually put the square across it to see if it's flat and square. It's flat, no. If you look at the square, can you see it's not resting on the back? So I've got to remove some from the middle. Wait, the job is to make that square touch the front and the back all the way across, obviously. Close, but not there. Sometimes if I move my square back and forth, it'll kind of shave away, but it's not gonna do it this time. Anyways, that's your job. That's the most important thing about this middle pin is to get it perfect across that way. And then it's gotta be all three of these sides on that triangle have to be perfectly square. Across, and then like, so across this way, and then across this way. I just did a little bit more work, that was easy, and it's sitting, and it's sitting all the way across, which is great. Other board now, and once I finish this board, we're gonna transfer our tails to the actual drawer front. All right, so there we are, we're ready to go. We're gonna transfer these, uh, these tails to the actual drawer front. I know you've seen this method before, it's really simple. You just lay your plane down, I like to set it like this, and you take your drawer, your drawer front and you set it in there, right? And what I like to do is just put, sort of put my one hand right under the bench and support the piece. I'll bring it right up like that until I feel it right up against there. Then I just tighten it down. So this is my right side of the drawer front here. So I need the, I need the right side of the, uh, the, the drawer itself. And an easy way to know that you're on the right one the correct one is to make sure your grooves line up. So I have a groove here and a groove here and they are lining up, you see that? So that means I'm correct. Since the grooves are what really need to be matching here, right, to make sure we're correct, also the bottoms have to be perfectly correct. So what I like to do is take a block of wood like this and butt it up against there. Then I'm gonna take a square, uh, then I'm gonna take a clamp and clamp it against there. Not too tight, I don't wanna mar the surface here. Now I've got this piece as a register face on the bottom of the drawer. 
which is great because what I don't want is that is for them to be misaligned, especially since I put all this work into making that drawer front fit perfectly. So I've got it perfectly there against the bottom registered, and now I'm just gonna bring them up to the line I scored. I'm gonna bring this up, and what I'm looking for is light. I'm looking to make sure there's no light from the bench showing up through. All right, I can see my lines. Now I'm gonna come back in with my pencil and just darken those. One thing real quick is I didn't actually take this line all the way across, so I'm gonna do that right now. And same thing here, I'm only gonna mark with the pencil what I'm gonna remove so we're right roundabouts where I'll be cutting all right there it is so I'm gonna transfer the other side and go from there and then we're gonna start chopping sawing and chopping actually so flip it over bring the hand plane up I got my hand under the bench and just slowly bringing it up to it. So this is the left side. I want to make sure I'm using the correct one. Grooves match up, which is great. Now before we can actually do any sawing, we've got to get our, we've got to measure how far down we're gonna saw, we're gonna make all this. So the easiest way to do that is, so I'm, here's my left, I'm actually, I'm gonna be doing the right side piece first. So you just put your pieces one on top of the other and sink your gauge down until it hits. And then tighten it up. And because I'm a little bit overcautious, I like to just confirm, looks good to me. And then just take your, take it across. And now I'm gonna transfer my lines down. This half pin on the end is the hardest because you're dealing with the, with the groove here. And marking my waist, marking the lines where I'm gonna be chopping or cutting, leaving that there not unmarked. Okay. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. I'm gonna take my dovetail saw, and I'm gonna saw really close to these lines as much as, po as possible. Again, leaving the outside in that middle chunk there. Before I forget, I've got this gents saw here. I've got this old saw here that really has no teeth on them because I filed them away more or less. And I'm just gonna carefully set it in that, those curves I just made towards the back and just tap it through. You don't want to go too much or too hard because you could actually break off, you split out the ends, half pins there. But I'm just going to take it easy. All right, I've got those ready to go. And what I'm actually going to do now is to make my work easier, I'm just going to saw a bunch of curves along here, making sure not to touch this middle again. So,
Now, the biggest chance that you might have for messing this up at this point is if you've done what I've done and you've sawed a ton of curves, curves in there, is you might accidentally try and chop that out. So you just that's what you want to be mindful of. At this point, it's just a bunch of chisel work. I'm going to concentrate on getting this fit right first before I move over to the other side and do anything. Now that we made a bunch of these curves, it's actually quite easy to chop them out. So what I like to do is I'll take a small chisel like my quarter inch and just start removing the small ones. Again, being careful not to touch that middle piece. FYI, this really sends piece rock, pieces rocketing out at you, so I sort of... Maybe you want to cover it with your hand a little. That fast, you've removed quite a bit. Now I'm going to come back with a larger chisel. Slightly, and just start... It's also helpful to chop down through the vertical grain, so the end grain here. I, once you have this stuff starting to get removed, it's just a matter of banging, the, just whacking the stuff out very carefully, of course, and uh, working on the fit. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put you on time lapse for a bit. And at this point, it's just a matter of working to your lines and making sure everything goes. Uh, I don't take, I don't work exactly to my lines and up on the top here until I've done some test fitting. But yeah, I'm going to remove the last little bit of waste here, and then start the fitting process. And I take the square and I put it up against there and make sure I have nothing impeding it. All right, I'm good there. Now I've got to make sure that my back wall here is perfectly uh, plumb or and straight. Or if anything, again, pushed back a little bit. So you could use your square for that, but you have to kind of improvise with it. And so. What I do is I, I just bring it up along here, like that, and trying to rest on the very top of the, it doesn't have to rest on the bottom, it just needs to, you just put it up against the back there. And I can see there's a gap at the top, right there, and there. So what I'll do is I'll just slowly pare away material on the bottom here, and uh, make sure that it's, that it's, that the top is either the farthest point out or it's all flush and even. The big problem with this is if it's if it's pulled out if it's if there's like a bump or if it's out at the bottom, it'll either push this out and then cause it maybe to break, or it'll push your actual tailboard out and then it'll be be a gap and you'll be trying to figure out what it is. So I'm just gonna slowly pare away material. I think at one point I said this was the right side. I think at one point I said this was the right side board, it's the left. Oh man, thinking backwards sometimes is confusing. This is the left side board, and I had a moment of panic there thinking I was wrong, but I'm just going to make sure everything lines up here, and everything seems to be good. I must have done it right, but I was really nervous for a second there. Everything seems fine. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just slowly pare away my lines, but... Yep, so I'm going to actually start at the middle, pare away those lines. Pare away two of those lines, excuse me. For the most part, I'm trying to leave the pencil. Also, I never do too much without actual just sitting the board on there and fitting it, seeing how it looks.
To get in really tight corners, I have this skewed chisel, which I got from Harbor Freight and part, as part of their carving set. I just flip it over on one side and I lay it flat on the other. It works really well. It does what I needed to do. Okay, this one side's very close. I can feel it. And I want to make sure that whatever happens, that this sits flush on the bottom. I can feel right now that the bottom of this drawer front is slightly lower than the bottom of the rail, which is bad. If anything, we want the bottom of the of the drawer side, excuse me, to be slightly lower. We can plane it away if we have to, but we want it to be. So what I'm going to do instead of moving up here on the middle, which would push the board this way, I'm going to remove slightly from the bottom now to push the board down. I'm just going to put the thing right on there and slowly pair, slowly pair it away. I'm very close. It's almost in. In fact, it is in. Okay, it's in right there on the, the one side. I'm not gonna force it, but I am gonna clean out this socket a little bit more. Now, same thing on the other side. I'm just gonna check the fit one more time, see where I need to remove from. The middle pin seems fine. I think I just need to remove from the very top here. If you don't get right up into those corners the whole way up and down, what I tend to do is I sink the chisel in there and as you see, I'm, I scrape it away. That'll be a source of frustration for sure. All right, here we go, nice test fit coming up here. Yeah, this is gonna go. That'll be fine. All right, so now I'm just gonna make sure that all my walls are perfectly straight up and down and plumb or whatever you wanna call it. I see that this is little, slightly kicked out, so I'm going to shave that. I should be good. All right. Um, I think I'm okay with that. What I'm going to do is, out of an abundance of caution, I'm going to clamp just below the line right here uh, where my gauge was marked. I'm going to clamp it. Fairly tight, but not enough to break the groove here. And then I'm just gonna slowly drive this in. Uh, and I will just relieve the corners on the bunt on the other side. This will give me every chance for success. All right, here we go. Okay, I can see that my board, something on my board is pushing this tail out slightly, so I'm glad I clamped it. And also, it's being pushed out a little bit here, so I'll have to do a little bit of fiddling, but it'll be good. Right now, that's a perfectly acceptable dovetail, but if I pull out my marking knife, I'll point some things out to you. There's a, that's actually looked like a gap, gap, but it's not. All right, so that's good right there. So let me, I'll show you. My knife will just catch on the bottom there, which is good. We don't want this to be higher. The, we want the board, the, the drawer face to be higher. There's a slight gap there. I think I know what it is. I can see a little bit of meat right in there. There's a slight gap there, which I'm not sure what it is, but I, I'll try and fix it. But everything seems to have pulled up pretty close, so I think this will be a good result. So I think I know what the problem is on the one side where there's a gap. If I put the square across, it's slightly out of square. It's slightly out of square. This side here is high. So what I'll do is I'll just shave that down. Yeah, there's... I might have just, yeah, well, since it was big at the bottom, it left a gap at the top, I would say. And that's a big mistake. I just think that's a stupid mistake on my part, but let me see if I can't close it up. That helped. The little gap up there, I'm a little disappointed with. It's, yeah, let me remove this. And actually, let me see, there's a, just an ugly piece. 
All right, so I'm okay with that. It's not actually, uh, unfortunately, it's not my best one of the day uh, of, the whole, of the whole series. That's not bad. You can see what I'm talking about, the gap right there. There's a slight gap right there, which is, which is annoying, but I think the glue will help fill that and mask it. Everything else looks fine. There seems to be a slight gap right there, which I might have over chopped it right there, who knows. But really, like from right here, it looks good, right? So I'm happy with that. So great. And then also on the bottom, it's exactly what I want. Slightly proud right there, which I can just plane away if necessary. Now on to the other side. That'll be good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. This. Yep, I, again, a couple of minor things that, you know, just with time, I'm sure will even themselves out. But I really seem to be uh, pushing that line too far back, even though I'm trying to be careful something's not letting it close the whole way and then i also i removed my chisel slipped right there there's a little gap but i'm pretty happy with that like if you uh when it's all square when it's all square for the most part it's a it's a pretty tight dovetail I'm not saying it's the best dovetail ever but it will definitely do for this project and uh when it when the wood swells up when it gets glue i'm pretty sure that this will look much, much more seamless. And then once I plane it down, it's gonna look awesome. So now I'm gonna put on the other side and we're gonna do a bit of a test fit here. All right, now we're gonna do our test fit. These, should, these are a little long. Good. All right. It's not hanging up on the bottom or the top, which is great. Awesome. Everything seems to be in nicely. Here's what they look like. Not bad. It sticks out a little bit, so I've got to remove this much here off the back. tested them in their actual space and it's a good fit. I have to do a little tiny bit of adjusting but I'm pleased with it. So I shouldn't need that for a little bit. Now it's time to do the back three dovetails and it's pretty simple in fact. So I've got it all marked the way I want it. Alright, this is really quite simple. We're gonna start by cutting the, ta the tails again on our sideboards here. Then we're gonna cut the pins to match. That's the way I do things here. For the tails, we've gotta take into account that groove here. This board is smaller or less tall than the other ones. And that's because as the back, you're gonna, you're gonna slide the drawer bottom under it. So this back piece has to be uh, lined up so that the bottom of it sits right on the top of that groove right there. So we're going to cut a line right there to open up the groove. So we're going to start our tails right on that groove. What I do is I just extend my, I put my thing up, my square up against the end and I extend it a quarter of an inch past the groove. Okay, so there's the groove. This is going to go past the groove by one quarter of an inch and then I mark it. Then I just basically come back and do a quarter inch on the other side. and I'll transfer my lines across. Now 
The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a straight line across the groove as well because we're going to cut out just above the groove. Now I'm going to transfer that straight line down right there. Okay. Now we're going to find the halfway between the top of the groove there, this top of the groove, and then the end of the board. Yeah, that looks good to me. And again, I'm just going to mark an eighth inch or a sixth, I'm going to mark an eighth inch gap. Here's what our layout, here's what our layout lines look like. Notice, notice right there, we're going to cut that away above the groove. So I've got a line straight down. There's my first tail. There's the whole tail right there. There's a gap, there's a tail, there's a half pin. Now we're just going to transfer our, our angle around. All right, there it is. And again, I'm going to fill in the lines where I'm going to be cutting out waste. That's one tail board. Now let's do the other. Now it's time to saw and remove and uh, create our tails. So the tail boards will look something like this. You'll have two tails here with a notch, and that notch sits just above the groove there. Now we're going to line up our pin board, which is the very back one, and transfer our lines around. Now this is one that we're gonna not want to mess up. We got to make sure we remove the bulk here, which is the tails, the tail pieces, by leaving the pins. Now for this one, I'm gonna once I saw it out, I'm gonna use a coping saw to remove the material. The important thing on this is to keep your saw very vertical. You want to saw inside of the waist, of course, and you want to leave the pins.
right. At this point, you should be able to tell if you're if they're going to fit right off the saw. And this one isn't. No big deal. I didn't really get it that close, but now it's just cleaning it up. Okay, so I just got this joint together. It's gonna be fine, I think. So, great. I'm really fine with that. Once I planed it up, it'll look great. All right, I'm gonna try and, I'm gonna fit the second one here. I gotta do a little bit of, there's some stuff to clean up. But I think it should go. Awesome. There's that. And then here's this. Wonderful, look at that. Not bad at all. Let's see if it fits. Probably have to do some adjusting. Now it's just barely too wide, which is great. That's exactly what I want. I'm gonna play away, I'm gonna plane away some stuff on the sides here. To plane it, I just lift up a dog right there, put that there, and put two clamps on it. You want to take light passes, of course. Okay, I tweaked it a little bit, and it's a really tight fit, but it'll go most of the way. It would go all the way. I didn't realize it would go off, but it's really, really tight at the front, so I'll have to do some more tweaking, but I'm happy with that. And with that, all three drawers are done. As you can see, I've already started to put the bottom in. This was a test piece here, just really thin stuff. But yeah, I've got very little left to do in the drawers, besides all I have to do is the bottom and a little bit of final fitting, which is really exciting. Now you can start to see the vision, the continuous grain with the beautiful maple contrast there. I'm really, really happy with it. Mm -hmm.